Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome to the Django RM Mastery series. In this tutorial, we take a first look at aggregation. Just very quickly, if you are new to the Django RM Mastery series, you will find a playlist in YouTube for this. And we've started from the very beginning here. What is Django RM? And we've been working through different aspects of the RM and working with data in Django. You will eventually find a link from one of those tutorials to the GitHub repository. And here you'll find all the resources for this tutorial series, as well as a structured view. And you can see here the jump that we've made looking at some more advanced topics in advanced. If you would like to follow this tutorial step by step, utilizing the code that I'm using here, there is a link in the video description to the repository where you'll find this project. This project has one, has a, a project here called book. And inside of the models, you can see that we've got one table here called book and we've got some fields here and I've already pre inserted uh, the data. You'll find the data here in the book CSV. So there's around about 199, 200 rows. So let's start off by trying to define what aggregation is here in the context of uh, Django RM. So far in this tutorial series, we've been looking at utilizing queries or generating queries to collect data from the database. So we select specific data that we want to retrieve from the database so we can display or perform additional actions. So aggregation is about not necessarily collecting values from a database, but generating values from information that's stored within the database. So here with aggregation, we want to collect a range of objects, a collection of objects, and then we want to perform some sort of calculation possibly on that data. So here we are in this tutorial, we are going to focus on a single table or single table aggregation. We will move into more complex aggregation once we've covered the next tutorial, which is annotation. So just take this example here. So previously we've been looking at queries where we have been selecting data from a database. So for example, select, um, select book where author equals author one, and that would then return all the data about uh, connected to author one. And there's two records here or two objects here that would get returned. So here with annotation, we want to take a collection of data, for example, this collection of data here, and we want to perform some sort of calculation. So for example, maybe we wanted to calculate the total price of all books. This is where we would utilize aggregation. We would find the collection of books we want to calculate and then perform the calculation. So maybe we wanted to find the average rating or the total average rating of all books or the maximum rating or the minimum rating of a book in our table. So these are the types of calculations or actions that we want to perform utilizing aggregation. So let's start by just counting. And I guess this is a form of aggregation. We're going to just count the amount of rows that we have in our database. So I will be utilizing the terminal as well as creating views to show how you can utilize these queries. Essentially, we'll build here in our views. And then I do have a template here that we can then output that data. So let's just go ahead and we're going to need to import our table first. So using our terminal, uh, let's just go into the the shell here. Right, so from book uh, dot models. So that's the, the book app here, book models. And we want to import book. So that gives us access to the book model. So now we can go ahead and perform some sort of query. So in this case, we're just going to take book and then use the default object manager. And then we're just going to count the amount of rows. There we go. So we have 189 rows in our table. So if you do want to explore the database a little bit further here, notice I've got SQL Lite Explorer. This is an extension called SQLite. Go ahead and install that. And that will then give you access to basically utilizing or accessing the SQL Lite database here. So this is my database, open the database. And then from there, I can drill down to the different tables. This is a table that we're working with. I'll just move that across. And you can see all the data that we have in this table. If you take a look at the data in the database, you can see that one of the fields is called ratings count. So this denotes the amount of times users have rated 
individual books. So this book here has been rated 6,333 times. So let's go ahead and use annotate to get a collection of books and then we're going to use sum to calculate the total amount of ratings that have been placed by all users over all books. So let's work in the terminal again to produce the data. So let's go ahead and first of all go into the shell again. So we're going to need to access the book information. So book models, this is all good practice, import and then book. Okay, so book being the project uh, models, the model file, inside the model file there is a class called book or a table called book or a model called book. So we've now accessed that information. Right, so we're going to need to summarize or, or sum, we're going to need to make a calculation. So we're going to use sum for that. So let's grab that from django.db. Uh, dot models and then in there we can import uh, sum so just be careful this does need a capital okay so if you are copying in this out letter by letter just make sure that you notice the um, the capital there for sum okay so we brought in the tools now so now we can go ahead and actually perform our aggregation so we need think of aggregation in two steps we're going to need some data to aggregate and then we're going to perform the aggregation I guess that's one way of looking at it. So let's go for book. Um, so that's the table that we want to work on. We're using the default objects manager dot all. So here we're just going to collect all the data from the database. So we're saying we select all the objects in our table. And now we're going to extend this with a dot and then we're going to aggregate. So aggregate. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to basically make a calculation. So we're going to use sum to then select the field that we want to calculate. So in this case, it's going to be ratings count. So in our sum here, we're going to select the ratings count. Okay, so that's the, the field that we want to um, calculate all the, the ratings. And then let's give that a go. And there we go. So we have a total here of it looks like 9,700,000 ratings in total. So that's a, a total of all ratings uh, from all books. Taking a closer look at this, two things that we can change here. First of all, we don't need to utilize the dot all in our query here. So aggregation will work without that. We've selected the table, we've selected the column, and now we're just going to perform the action. So that will work exactly the same without using dot all, for example, in this case. Now, secondly, you notice that what is returned. So here we're returning a dictionary key value here and notice the name that's being generated. So this is automatically generated by Django. Um, you can see that we have the name of the column, which is rating count, and then the action that we performed, which was sum. So that's important, obviously, to understand because when we return this data, you'll want to access this data. So in order to access this data here in this dictionary, potentially we're going to be utilizing the name here or the key. So if you do need to change the name um, of our key here, then all you need to do, like I've performed two examples here, is just place before the sum a name. So in this case, new name equals sum. So let's just go ahead and rename this again. So for example, new equals sum, and that's going to change the key name. So we can just see the complete view here um, of utilizing this in our view, uh, because sometimes a lot of the examples of fine students find it then difficult to kind of comprehend how that's going to then be utilized in a view. So apologies if this makes uh, sense and you're already familiar to this. I know that some students can find it difficult moving from the terminal into the view. So let's just go ahead and perform the same action here in a view and we're just going to output this to our index page. So we're just going to bring in some, we're going to bring in our model like we've done here in the terminal. Now we just need to go ahead and create a view. So I've already gone ahead here and inside of our URLs, probably in the core here, we have a path to the, the home page and our view is just going to be called example. So let's just go ahead and create our view here. So example, we're going to pass in 
a request and then from here we're just going to now perform the the aggregation so let's just uh bring that in so let's just name this uh, data equals so that's the data we're going to return so that's going to be the key in our dictionary so from here we just need to return so let's just return that so return a render and then bring in our request and then we want to name our template so this template has already been set up here in the templates folder called index and then we want our data in our dictionary so data is going to be um, in this case well let's go ahead and just um, give this a value data equals and then we pass that data over to our template right so let's go ahead and just import oh, let's import the uh, render so we can utilize that so we're just going to pass this data over if we can also if you like we can print so that we can have a look in the terminal here so let's just exit this and we're going to then run the server so by running the server it just allows us then to potentially um, run this view which is then going to fire off our print so let's go ahead and access the home page so you can see there's nothing on the home page uh, so i'll just refresh it a few times and when we go back into the, the terminal you can see that we're printing out the data and you can see the dictionary that we're printing out is data that's the key name that we've described and right here uh, so let's go ahead now and just output that up with that in our index page so from here you can see that we're passing it over as data um, that's the key name so data and then inside of the data we should have and we've set up our um, key to be called data so that's how we should be able to access the data so we can just change that if we like to something different the data um, just to make sure it's different because we've used data so many times here just wanted to clarify this so it's called the, the data now so we can access um, this variable so we stored the data in this variable we're passing it across here in our dictionary so that's passed across over to now our template so we can now access the data through data dot the data so that should display the information on our template keeping the code nice and explicit and easy to read you can see now how we've scaled this up so from Django DB models we brought in some more tools so we've had some or we've had an example of some so now we're bringing max so find the max number within a range or within an aggregated uh, object set if you like find the minimum number and then the average so these tools that um, are typically utilized here with aggregates so you can see now that um, let's just get rid of the the all don't need that so you can see that we, i've set this up here we have four queries utilizing these different tools um, on exactly the same field and you can see now i'm just going to output that uh, the individual objects that are returned or the data sorry that's returned the calculations and then we're just going to output that to the template so what we end up with is this so I hope you get the general idea from looking at this example let's just go ahead and refactor this example because we don't need to create multiple queries here to perform all these different actions we can do this with one aggregate so let's just go ahead and we're going to remove this and we're just going to bring it into the one query if you like so we can bring all of this out here and to use aggregate to perform multiple calculations in this case on the same on the same field okay so we just take that out so you can see that it's separated by commas let's just go back to our template but in actual fact if we did go to our template we would have an error because notice what we're doing here we've set the names so this is some so let's just go ahead and call this now data uh, so that we can now access this um so we don't need to now have all of these here uh, we're going to just need one so data so we're going to pass some data and obviously inside of this data we're going to access the individual um, calculations 
uh, or numbers uh, through the names that we've defined here. So sum, max, min, average. OK, so that should collect the data. So um, let's just call that data. OK, so we're going to collect the data on our template through the context here name data or the key name data. Uh, so let's go back into our index. Uh, so now we're going to need to change that to data. And inside of our data, we should have these key names. All right, so let's go back in and refresh. And there we go. So just taking a look at the final example there, you can see we've just moved all of those calculations into the one aggregate. Let's now finish this tutorial looking at how we might want to implement this utilizing a class-based view. So first of all, let's just convert. So I've commented out the previous code. Let's bring in, for example, list view. So this should work with uh, any of the other generic or some of the other generic views if you're using generic views. Uh, so let's bring that in. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to set up a new class here called example, bring in the list view, and then we can go ahead and select the model that we want to use and then the template. So our template is called index.html inside of a templates folder. So if it is in a folder, we'd need to define the folder in the templates folder if that was the case. But here we're just using the root here of our templates folder. OK, so now let's go ahead. We're going to pass the data over in context uh, so that we can then capture it on our template. So we're going to override the get context data. And then first of all, we're going to basically just select um, all of our context data. So we're going to get all the context data. And that's then going to allow us then to add some more data. So here we're going to add a new piece of data. So the key, think of this uh, the context as a dictionary. So we're going to add some more data to the context. When we pass it over to the template, we're going to capture that information and display it. So here we're going to give it a name. So this is um, the context uh, key of the key value of our of our new entry in our dictionary. So I'm just going to call this ratings count. So like we've done before, we're just going to use the aggregate here. Uh, so books, objects, uh, aggregate. Uh, so that's going to then, we're then going to get the ratings count. And we're going to just, just uh, basically count all the ratings in this column. So like we've done before, so once we've done that, we then just need to return the context. So that's just adding more information to the context. Now that's going to be passed over to our template. So we're going to need to edit the template. So what's important here is to remember the format. So here we're going to give our, we're creating a new key value. So this is the name of the, the key. And if you remember, we're using sum. So what's going to happen here is an automatic name is going to be generated or semi-automatic name. So it's going to be rating count, double underscore sum. And that's how we're going to then select this data. So let's just have a look at that in the template here. So we select the key uh, rating count. And then remember how Django is automatically going to create some a new um, name, which is going to be rating count and then double underscore sum. So that's the actual data. So by doing that, we should be able to capture that new information and that should now appear on our template. So let's take a look at that. OK, so I'm just opening up the template, refresh, and there we go. So hopefully we have a better understanding now of aggregation. I wanted to stop here before we move into deeper concepts of aggregation and talk in the next tutorial about annotate. Once we then have a clearer picture of what aggregation is and annotate is, we can then move deeper into aggregation. So thank you very much for listening. Hopefully it was useful and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.